Have you ever felt paralyzed by fear? What if I told you that a battle is being waged right now, not on visible battlefields, but within you? What do you do when fear knocks at your door? Do you surrender? Or do you challenge the enemy with faith that transcends your understanding? Fear is a tool that the devil loves to use. He delights in seeing believers tormented by uncertainty and panic. Why? Because fear is the complete opposite of faith. Faith calls us to trust fully in God, to believe that He is in control of everything that happens to us. Be anxious for nothing, the Word of God tells us. Let not your heart be troubled, is a refrain that resonates through the scriptures. This is because God wants us to live by faith, trusting Him at every moment and for every need. But what happens when fear seeps into our hearts? Our world shakes. Doubts begin to arise. What if I fail? What if I am not strong enough? What if things go wrong? Fear makes us question not just our capabilities, but also the faithfulness of God. And that's where the devil sees an opening. He introduces this fear to divert us from the path of faith, to make us forget that we are guided and protected by God who never fails. However, there is a truth that the devil hates above all. He cannot stand to see a believer who rejects the spirit of fear. He hates it when we stand up, not intimidated by what we see, but guided by the Word of God. There is no victory for the devil when he faces a believer who dares to believe that nothing is impossible for God. This resistance to fear is our first step towards great blessings and breakthroughs. When we reject fear and choose faith, we are not only challenging the devil's expectations, but also opening our hearts to the wonders that God can perform in our lives. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him, encourages Psalm 34, 8. While fear seeks to paralyze us, the Word of God offers us constant support and endless encouragement. In the midst of life's storms, when fear tries to make us feel isolated and vulnerable, it is essential to remember that we are not alone. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, declares Isaiah 41.10. God promises to be with us at every step of the way, no matter how difficult the journey may seem. He is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, when fear tries to infiltrate our hearts, we have a powerful choice to make. Trust in God's promises or succumb to the panic and anxiety that fear wants to sow. Living in fear is living in contradiction to God's commandments. He calls us to live by faith, a faith that not only connects us with the divine, but also liberates us from the chains of panic. Each time we choose faith over fear, we declare that our trust is in a God who never fails, a God who transforms fears into triumphs and anxiety into adoration. But it does not end here. God does not just call us to overcome fear. He equips us to face it. He gives us spiritual armor, as described in Ephesians the 6, so that we may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. This means that we do not merely survive the attacks of fear, but we emerge stronger and more resolute in our faith. Imagine yourself as a warrior on a battlefield. Not an ordinary battlefield, but a territory where your weapon is faith and your shield is the Word of God. Every fear, every doubt that arises, is an enemy to be confronted, not with swords or weapons, but with the firm conviction that God is by your side. You, as a believer, are called to be a hero of faith. A hero who, instead of succumbing to fear, chooses to challenge it with the eternal truth of the Scriptures. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, reminds us 2 Timothy 1.7. You are equipped with everything you need to be courageous and bold. Every word of doubt, every whisper of discouragement can be countered with the promise that you are more than a conqueror through him who loved you. But what does it mean to be a warrior of faith? It means to see beyond the immediate circumstances, beyond the reports that try to sow despair. It means looking at the mountain of worries and saying, Move, Bichur, 
because your faith is grounded on the rock that is Christ Jesus. When challenges come, when the headwinds blow, the warrior of faith does not get discouraged. He is strengthened in the presence of God, knowing that every battle faced is an opportunity to witness the redeeming and sustaining power of the Lord. You are not alone in this fight. Every step taken in faith is a step accompanied by the heavens. Every decision to not be intimidated by fear is a victory that echoes through the celestial corridors. If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8:31. This is not just a statement, it is a declaration of war against all the forces that try to bring us down. Imagine now that you are having a direct conversation with God's promises. Each verse, a clear and powerful response to the doubts and fears you face. Do you feel fear? Asks Psalm 34, 8. Come and see how good the Lord is. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. And when you wonder about protection in times of crisis, Isaiah 41.10 answers, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let these words transform into a living dialogue within you. Imagine that each of your worries is met with a divine promise. Is your heart restless? Matthew 6.34 teaches, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And if doubts about provision arise, remember Philippians 4.19, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. It is a dialogue where not only you speak, but God responds with promises that surpass any physical reality or adverse circumstance. Imagine then that every step of faith you take is accompanied by a voice that encourages, saying, Take heart, I am with you. I not only walk beside you, but I guide each step you take. This voice is God's promise that amid the storms you are not alone. He is both your refuge and your strength, not merely a spectator, but an active participant in the story of your life. And when facing challenges that seem insurmountable, Proclaim the words of Mark 11:23. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. This is not just a scripture, it is an invitation to audacity, to believe in the extraordinary, to call the impossible into existence by faith. Therefore, face each day not as a burden, but as an opportunity to converse with the promises of God, to let them shape your reality and guide your steps. After all, it is not the size of the challenges that defines your destiny, but the strength of your faith, nourished and sustained by the eternal and unchanging Word of God. If I could sit with you right now, face to face, I would like to share something very personal. I know that sometimes life feels like a minefield, where each step carries the risk of detonating worries and fears. I understand because I've been there too. But it was in one of those moments, as I felt surrounded by uncertainties, that I discovered a transformative truth. The truth is that Jesus is not just a distant figure or a historical character. He is alive and active, and He desires to walk alongside us in every challenge. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, and when he speaks of the way, it's not just a direction but a shared path, a journey we take together. So I invite you now, no matter how difficult your situation seems, to choose to believe. Choose to believe that Jesus is with you every step of the way. Do not be swayed by worldly wisdom or the despair that is so often presented to us as the only reality. Medical opinions, well-meaning advice while helpful, are not the final word. The final word belongs to Jesus. And here's what I propose. Let's make a choice together. Let's decide here and now that no matter what others say, we will trust in God above all. Let's reject fear and embrace faith. Let's reject anxiety and clothe ourselves in peace. Because when we choose Jesus, we choose the overcoming of all adversities. I do not know the specifics of your challenges, but I know one thing. If God is for us, who can be against us? Together, 
we can face anything and emerge not just survivors, but victors. Therefore, I encourage you to take that step of faith, not just to believe in Jesus with words, but with actions. Live the truth that He is the way. And if you are ready to make that choice, pray with me now. A prayer to reaffirm your faith and reject any fear. Close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath. Imagine yourself in a safe place, a refuge where no harm can touch you. This place exists, and it is within reach of your faith. It is in the promises of God for you. As you breathe, remember the words that say, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Imagine now that every concern about your future, your security, and your needs is being taken care of, not by your own hands, but by the hands of God. As you sit in this space of peace, think about the times you felt alone or helpless. Remember God's words, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Feel that strength that comes not from you, but from something much greater. This is an eternal truth. God is always with you, offering not just His presence, but also His protection. He is your support when you feel weak, your guide when you feel lost, and your hope when all seems hopeless. Now, slowly open your eyes. Return to this moment. How do you feel knowing that your life is in the hands of God? That no matter what happens, He has a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future? As you walk through your life, carry this meditation in your heart. When uncertainty arises, when fear tries to take hold, return to this place of promise and divine protection. And always, always, remember to seek first the kingdom of God, trusting that everything else you need will be provided. If I were face to face with you, I would start our conversation with a confession. I haven't always been strong. There were moments in my life where doubt weighed more than my faith, where the fear of failure, anxiety about the future, and the weight of expectations paralyzed me. I felt like I was constantly fighting against a strong current, always on the verge of being swept away. But it was during one of these moments, where my vulnerability seemed to dominate, that I truly understood the power of faith. Not a superficial faith, but a faith that is born deep in the soul, when you are on the ground, broken and powerless. It was then I realized that God did not expect me to be perfect. He did not expect that I would never doubt or never fall. In fact, it was the opposite. God was there, especially in those moments of weakness, extending His hand and inviting me to trust Him more deeply. As I accepted that outstretched hand, something inside me began to change. With each step of faith, even trembling, I felt a strength that was not my own. It was a strength that allowed me to face my fears, overcome my anxiety, and above all, transform my doubt into strengthened belief. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, says Hebrews 11.1. 1. So, I want to share this with you, not as someone who has never failed or doubted, but as someone who has discovered that these failures and doubts can be the foundations for a more authentic and profound faith. A faith that does not ignore the reality of suffering and struggle, but confronts them head on, armed with the promises of a God who says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 Therefore, the next time you feel overwhelmed, remember that you are not alone. You have the company of countless others who, despite their imperfections and moments of doubt, chose to believe. And this choice, this decision to trust in God despite the circumstances, is what truly defines overcoming through faith.